It's the first of February. So it's been about eight years since I took off from my hometown of Olympia in the state of Washington. I've come back here now to my home to continue my journey around the world's wine regions. This episode's a bit different because it has to do with me rediscovering what my hometown and what my home wine regions are about. Straight on to Colin grew up in Olympia, Washington. We chose it for a lot of reasons to raise a family. The location of Olympia has got a lot of options. So you can go skiing, you can go to the ocean. We went out, went crabbing in the water, we went salmon fishing, we dug for gooey ducks, we did everything that was a Pacific Northwest dream. The last two years we spent time exploring what kind of activities go on in the vineyard and in the winery during the summer around the months of harvest. And now we're going to get out and we're going to explore the vineyards and the wineries in the dead of winter. My brother Devin decided to take a little bit of time off work and come and spend some time with me in the San Juan Islands and get back out and do a little bit of what him and I did when we were kids. Even though there are not many vineyards here on the San Juan Islands, this is still what my journey around the world's wine regions are about. Washington State holds some of the greatest vineyards, and I'm going to see them soon, but for now, I'm going to sit back and enjoy the San Juans with my brother Devin. Just got into the San Juan Islands. It's beautiful up here. Even though we didn't catch big fish on the island, I know Devin and I got to spend a bit of time together again when it's been roughly eight years since I've been around home. Now there are some wineries on this island, but the main climate which grows grapes here in Washington State is the continental climate on the east side, where we're going to be headed to check out a bit of what's going on there later on. Better hop on a seaplane, get back and see that home city of Seattle, just north of where I grew up. I noticed that all the wineries are shipping their wine here, so there's a great wine culture, a great coffee culture, and great seafood, all to be had right downtown in the city of Seattle. I've come across Post Alley, where I found a wine shop called The Tasting Room, where I've been able to go through and pick out each wine that I wanted and make my own wine flight. Wine flights are available at most wine bars, and they allow people to see different wines side by side to help them notice differences and unique attributes about each wine that they wouldn't see if they ordered one glass. Woodenville is just 20 minutes outside of downtown Seattle. There's a few places out there like J&M, Chateau St. Michel, a few areas that seclude themselves a bit to feel more like wineries. What I found that was really fun was their warehouse district where there's tons of different wineries packed side by side and you can go in and, you know, cereal taste wine. Alan Shoup is someone who is the former CEO of Chateau St. Michel, Washington's largest winery, and he has now done his own brand, Long Shadows. When I came to Washington, there was only a handful of, of wineries. What makes Long Shadows truly unique is the fact that, uh, and most people don't understand this, but that a lot of wineries use consultants, but the, every one of the uh, men that I've brought to Washington to make a wine of their specialty. It's my job at the winery, Long Shadows Vintners, to follow each winemaker's vision and steps and techniques on how to make their wine. Those winemakers are actually partners and they're not consultant with us, they're really part of Long Shadows Vintners. The first thing that caused all of our success in the state of Washington was the uniqueness of this viticultural region. A lot of people feel, whether they're in the wine industry or not, that during the winter time not much is going on. That's not really the case. You know, the wines need to be bottled. The wines also need to go through a secondary fermentation called malolactic fermentation. And there's quite a few things that go on, but one of the most important factors in my eyes is blending. And with the Long Shadows brand, 
they're blending more than just the wines. They're blending the world-class winemakers that exist today. They're blending the best of the vineyards from Washington State. The most important part of my job as a winemaker for the final product is really to provide to the customer a very solid product. So I need to do a lot of QC and testing, actually blending and following the wine throughout his life. Getting in and being able to taste all these wines really showed me that Long Shadows is able to show the potential of the Washington wine industry through the vision of completely different winemaking personalities and wines that have all unique and different personalities as well. The one thing that they have in common is Washington fruit. Given the fact that Jill and I have our first big wine region adventure tomorrow, the crew and myself decided we wanted to get some good grub before we had to hit the mountain. We decided to see what restaurants span from here in Woodenville into the city of Seattle. Tonight, I know I need a good meal, and Seattle is the epicenter for good seafood in the Pacific Northwest. The Cascade Mountain Ranges is actually one of the biggest pieces of winemaking equipment that every winemaker in Washington uses today. It's what creates the rain shadow on the east side of the state that allows the grapes to grow for the wines that you guys drink from here. I had to get out and really explore a little bit more about this piece of equipment. And some people that make some amazing, amazing snowboard equipment from Seattle is Tyler and Bryce Kloster from Caracorn. So my brother and I were identical twins. A couple of good friends of ours referred to us as K2, and obviously the name K2 is taken. So we thought, oh, what better than just take the mountain range name that the K2's in. So that's where Caracorn came from. We've always wanted to work together. We've always had this dream of starting our own company. Finally came together when, when Bryce tried to split board for the first time. Making my first turn, it just didn't feel like a snowboard. I came back from that and called Tyler when I got home. I was like, there, there's got to be a better way to, to make this split board feel like a snowboard. I had never, ever done split boarding in my life, but I had talked to Tyler from Caracorm, and he told me that he'd take Gilles and I out and so we had to give it a go. Yeah, when Colin called me and said, let's go on an adventure or something, I said, what kind of an adventure or whatnot? So, you know, we're gonna go skiing and whatnot. The experience of being able to do the alpine touring going up the mountain was really, really cool. It was one of those things you could manage, like yeah. you can manage when you're skinning up. Exactly. You can, you can stop for a second and rest and go and a, little go a little bit more. Bit more yep. But when you're going across and traversing at the end of it, that mm -hmm. was just so taxing and just... That's beautiful, right? Yeah. Not gonna lie, I had a bit of a newfound respect for splitboarding. We made yeah. it out. Yeah. We did good. Cheers, man. Fun. Cheers. I've learned a lot about wines, and I've learned a lot about myself. I want to go to a wine region in the United States and possibly summit a peak, who knows, maybe 14,000 feet in Denver somewhere. If I'm honestly going to do that, Tyler and Bryce opened my eyes up. I better hit the gym and get in shape because I've got a lot to learn and i got muscles to train so that I can do the adventures that I want to do. And one muscle I need to train back as well is my palate. Been doing plenty of filming, a bit of wine drinking, but I need to get back to tasting and seeing what wines there are in the United States of America.